Welcome to my little video about how to bring an old radio back to life. Some of you may recognize this unit. I put an audio amplifier in it a while back in another video. It turns out the audio amplifier may have not been the problem after all. Actually, there are two other major possibilities for trouble in an old radio like this, and we're going to look at both of these in this video. By far, the most problems I've had with radios has been in the volume control. They tend to get a little scratchy sounding, and I've generally found out this can be cleared again with my old friend WD-40. All you really have to do is find some way of getting the WD-40 inside the potentiometer on the working surface. As you can see in this case, this potentiometer has a notch in the top, making introduction of the liquid very easy. The second location, and the one you probably never suspect, is in the sliding switches. This radio has two sliding switches, one for the mode selection and one for the band selection for the FM and AM radio. For purposes of speeding up the video, I've already removed the board containing the mode selection switch. You'll note that this is a three gang switch with two sides for each gang. This particular switch is a three position switch. First position the switch in switch position number one. You may have to remove a conformal coating to access the actual solder pads on the bottom of the switch. Now, here's how to check and see if you have the problem that I encountered with my radio. Using an ohmmeter, first check the two positions on one side of the first gang of the switch. Then move on and check the second two positions of the same gang of the same switch. Okay, now position the switch in switch position number three and repeat the procedure. In one position, the measurement between the two contact pads should be zero. In the other position of the switch, it should be infinite. You'll want to check all remaining gangs in the same manner on both sides of the switch. If you see high resistance in the same location with the switch in both one and three positions, then keep watching the video. You've got some work to do and I'll show you how to fix it. I've already completed repairs on the switch that we just looked at. What brought all this on was one day my radio was working, the next day it wasn't. After checking with the headset plug-in, I found out that uh, the volume was extremely low. After performing the checks I just outlined, I determined that the problem was in the switch. The switch we're going to be looking at for the duration of this video is the AM-FM band selection switch. While I've never had problems with the FM radio, the AM radio has always been kind of weak. So I thought I'd go ahead and pull this switch and check it just to be sure that wasn't the problem, just like it was with the main soundboard and amplifier. This is the underside of that same switch. You notice that it is single gang and dual sided, just like the other switch was. Here's a quick shot of the remove switch and the board it was removed from. Here's the desoldering tool I used to remove the switch. This particular unit came from Radio Shack. ECG sells an almost identical unit. They work very well on single-sided boards, less well on dual-sided boards. Operation of this tool is very simple. Simply squeeze the bulb, place the tip with the hole in it over the workplace or the work pin you want desoldered, release the bulb, then remove the tool from the work area, then blow off the solder in an area well away from your work area to avoid contaminating your work area. Here's a close-up view of the switch after being removed from the board. When disassembling the switch, I found that a very stout set of needle nose pliers with a very fine point works best. Work from the side of the switch, levering out away from the switch, staying clear of the pins which are easily damaged. Here's a quick shot of the switch with the lower section removed. Here's the lower section of the switch with the slider still in place on the switch. Here's one of the sliders. These are extremely delicate, so make no attempt to clean these. Just remove them and then put them back, being very, very careful not to damage one. Here's the switch with the sliders removed. You'll notice some discoloration indicating the switch might have some issues. Discoloration like this usually indicates the old factory grease has dried out or some oxidation has taken place. In any event, the switch won't work correctly and will usually give a high resistance. The next step is to clean the switch. For that I used a Dremel tool and a very fine wire brush. This particular wire brush came from McMaster Car. 
I used 220 grit sandpaper to go between the two sides where the Dremel tool couldn't reach. Now it's time to put it all back together. When reassembling the switch, you want something that can lubricate the sliders as well as provide some corrosion resistance. I've generally found that this Permatex dielectric grease provides excellent results any place where some lubricating grease is required. Here's a shot of the assembled switch, but before I bend the locking tabs back. Now, bear in mind, when you're resetting the locking tabs, you want to avoid any contact with the pins that you're going to be soldering back in the board. Always work from the top of the switch using a very stout pair of needle nose pliers to bend the tabs back. Here's a shot of the switch inserted in the board but not yet soldered, and the final soldered in switch. And now, for all you doubting Thomases out there who think I did nothing but tear up an old radio, Let's try this. And I'll leave you with the sounds of the beach. This here engineer ain't finished yet. He got a lot more tricks up his sleeve. If you're liking what you're seeing, uh, give me a like and consider subscribing. I just might have something else coming down here real soon you're going to want to see. Be gone, but don't let it be you too. Come on back and see me real soon.